We have a lot of rumors to talk about here today. We're only three days ahead of the NHL trade deadline. Today, we have the latest news and rumors on the Ottawa Senators, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Vancouver Canucks. Plus, we have the situation in Philly with Claude Giroux. Is he heading to Colorado, Florida? Where is he going to end up? We have more injury news out of Vegas, plus news on the waiver wire. All that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to discuss today. Only three days ahead of the trade deadline. Of course, we saw yet another trade earlier this afternoon with the Hawks and Lightning hooking up on a pretty substantial deal involving three different players and four different picks involved in the trade with Brandon Hagel and two fourth-round picks going from the Hawks to the Lightning in exchange for Taylor Radish, Boris Kachuk, and two first-round picks. So that's a quite a substantial haul for the Blackhawks. It's a pretty good acquisition by Tampa, but they did certainly pay a hefty price to get it as they go for their third consecutive Stanley Cup. So, of course, uh, there is a dedicated video on that trade from earlier today on the channel if you want to check out more details of it. That's just a quick recap. That's what already happened here today. Uh, on the waiver wire today, we have Andre Sekera from the Dallas Stars has cleared so he can be reassigned or whatever they want to do in that case because he's not been picked up by another team. And we do have a case of the Flyers placing uh, Ryan Fitzgerald on waivers today. I believe he was on an AHL-only deal, and that likely means they're going to upgrade that and sign him to a two-way NHL contract, but he would require waivers to do so. So I believe that's what's going on in that scenario. Now, of course, we had another injury last night with the Golden Knights, and this time it's Star Center, uh, who they acquired earlier this year, Jack Eichel. I mean, they... The injuries in Vegas is absolutely insane this year. If you look at the, the battles that they've had on the injury bug with Mark Stone, Pacioretty, Robin Leonard's got multiple injuries right now. Alec Martinez has been out. Riley Smith is now out. And now Eichel might have a broken or a fractured hand. It's not quite clear yet. I know Coach Peter DeBoer indicated earlier today that they didn't have the results yet, so they wasn't sure of the extent, but it was very concerning. Um, so I don't know what, what happens in Vegas. Like, to me... Uh, they, they're going to have so much uh, money on LTIR possibly that they could go out and get a bunch of other players, but it's absolutely crazy on how the injury bug has bit them so hard this year. Uh, I know I saw a rumor as well in the uh, New York Islanders Hockey Now uh, site indicating that they were pretty interested in Islanders goaltender Semyon Varlamov, who has this year and another year left on his contract as they might look to replace Robin Leonard, who, like I said, is battling multiple injuries. There is reports out there that the one that caused him to be uh, on crutches and the lower body injury might be a fractured patella, so like a kneecap. I mean... There's some reports out there saying that's not the case, but there's plenty that claim it to be true. So I don't know the full extent of his injuries, but before that he was battling a, a labrum issue in his shoulder. Uh, either way, like Leonard, is, there's a chance his regular season could be done. It really looks that way. Um, and even if he does come back, he could be playing through injury and it might not be really what's best for him or the team. So could they make a play for Varlamov? I mean, Ilya Sorokin's clearly taken over the starting role uh, between the pipes for the Islanders. Had an outstanding effort last night against the Rangers uh, where he battled uh, his longtime friend and, uh, you know, certainly goaltender competition that he's used to battling and throughout all the years of Russia, Igor Shosturkin. Uh, those two went head-to-head -head and had quite a, a battle in New York last night, which is going to be fun to watch those two go head-to-head -head for a lot of time in the future. It'd be nice to see them have a playoff series at some point as well. But it certainly does make Varlamov expendable, in my opinion. Uh, the Islanders could use some cap flexibility to make a few upgrades for next year, and moving that contract would be a big help. So I can see there being potentially, like, you know, a mutual reasoning why it could work out, but it's hard to say what Golden Knights do. I mean, to me, like, they have so many injuries, you can't help but wonder... Will they come to the conclusion that maybe it's best just not to do anything and see where it goes? And if they can get into playoffs and get these guys healthy, they will still have a really good team. But if they have further injury uh, issues or some of these guys can't make it back, like it's going to be a pretty serious situation. They don't have a lot of prospect and draft capital that they can trade. They've traded a lot of it away already that they've acquired over the last four years and there's just not much there, so I really don't know what we're going to do, but I know that Bill Foley as an owner is very impatient and wanted a Stanley Cup within five years and is probably going to be on uh, McPhee and McCrimmon to do, do whatever he can to be aggressive to get them there. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be a very interesting team to watch here over the next few days. Now, we have a variety of reports from a variety of insiders here on the latest that we might see uh, over the next few days. Let's start with a report from Frank Valley indicating that uh, Tyler 
Bertuzzi in Detroit apparently has uh, speculated that he's made it known to Steve Eiserman and Red Wings management that he would welcome a trade. He's not asking for a trade, but he's basically saying that he would be fine with it and would welcome it. So there is belief that there's a good chance that Bertuzzi will be moved before Monday's deadline. Uh, there was already reports of a variety of teams showing some interest. I know the Penguins were one team that were apparently uh, having some conversations. There's, I know the LA Kings are looking to add another forward with term, as but the rumor is on LA, so they, they could be Bertuzzi, but they are looking at another player that we'll talk about here shortly as well. Um, and then even like the teams like the Rangers, there's a few other teams that could be in there, but it's hard to say what level of seriousness they all kind of have, but Bertuzzi is a productive guy. I know he made headlines this year for being one of the very few unvaccinated NHL players with their COVID vaccine, but uh, you know, obviously that's not such an issue anymore. Um, and as the restrictions and mandates are slowly lifted here across North America, that's not going to be a problem for him to be able to play in uh, in many places anymore. And he's like he's still relatively young, young enough at least that he could be you know a good solid player for a few years, um, good productive player at that. So we'll see where it goes. But I do expect a good chance of Tyler Bertuzzi to be moved by the Red Wings. Over the next few days, and of course, Frank Saravalli is also reporting another Red Wing and longtime defenseman Nick Letty, who they acquired this past offseason from the New York Islanders, uh, is rumored to possibly be heading to the Dallas Stars. We know the Stars are going to be without Miro Heskinen. They're likely keeping John Klingberg as their own rental. They put Andre Sequeira on waivers, as we talked about earlier, and that could be to bring in another player. And if the Red Wings are willing to retain some salary and maybe take a contract back or something, they could certainly make the money work down in Dallas. Letty would be a decent fit there, a veteran guy that wouldn't cost too much. It's rumored that it's looking at probably a second or third round pick going back the other way. Um, so we could see Letty on the move here um, as he was this past offseason. That could be a, a good little fit there in Dallas as they try to get themselves into a playoff spot. I don't think they'll be doing anything too extensive beyond that, but uh, that's, that would make sense for them to try to add a little bit of help there on the blue line as they fight for a spot in the playoffs. In Ottawa, there's still some talk that Nick Paul might be traded. He obviously are still negotiating on a new contract. They are sitting him out of tonight's game as precaution in case they do have to move him. The rumored contract offer from Ottawa right now is $10 million over four years, which gives him an average annual value of 2.5. Apparently, he and his agent are looking for closer to three. You might say, you know, why can't they just bridge that gap? And to be honest, I think the $2.5 million contract offer is fair. He's a player that was picked up from the Dallas Stars and the Jason Spezza trade way back. So he's been in the Sens organization a long time. Certainly paid his dues in the minors, put in a lot of time, getting better. He's been a, only been a regular NHLer for the last couple of seasons. Uh, got himself to a point where he's been wearing an A this year. Uh, doesn't put up a ton of points, but he does have some offense of talents. Uh, uh, he has his moments, but normally known for more of a defensive checking role. He has good size. He's like six foot four, 220 pounds, extremely good conditioned athlete in that sense. He quite often was uh, winning or near the top a lot of the uh, uh, the testing stuff in uh, training camp in Ottawa. So certainly from that perspective, he's, he's a great athlete in that sense. But um, to me, for what he brings you on the ice, I think the, the contract offer is fair. Uh, if he doesn't want to take it, I get a, you know, sometimes it's not always greener on the other side of the, of the fence, right? Um, but there has been rumored to be some interest from a variety of teams. Uh, hard to say what level of seriousness they all kind of had. I've heard uh, Edmonton maybe being one. I've heard a few teams in the U.S. too. Um, you know, hard to say where he could go. The Avalanche were one team that was mentioned, but uh, hard to say because I know they're working on a few things for sure. But in my opinion, uh, if they can't get him to uh, agree to terms, and I wouldn't probably go any higher than maybe 2.75 on the AAV at most if you want to do a last-minute offer, but I would not go all the way to three. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it, uh, they have a guy like Alex Formanton who's younger, uh, faster and can do a very similar role. And right now he's been playing more of a top six role because a combination of injuries and just those spots are not completely filled yet. But if they can acquire themselves a more um, like a higher end number two left winger and bump Formanton down to number three, uh, or, or or center Iceman, like they don't really necessarily need Nick Paul to play that role. They could easily replace him with Formanton or even Ridley Gregg, who's a top prospect coming up. As much as I like him as a player, I hate to see him go over something so small. 
But you can't overpay for bottom six players. We've seen other teams really get themselves in trouble that way. And even though the Sens have a lot of cap space today, they have a lot of young players that are going to be graduating out of their ELCs in the next couple of years that they kind of need to be careful with. So to me, a good chance he gets traded unless they come to a small uh, bridge the gap there in that contract negotiations, but not looking good at this point that he stays. Um, on another deal here, the Canucks apparently have been talking to LA about Connor Garland. We've heard a lot about Canuck forwards here in the past several weeks trying to get some cap space that Jim Rutherford wanted to achieve for the team. I heard uh, we've seen Dave Pagnona and Frank Sarah Valley both report on the fact that the Canucks have indeed had a lot of exploratory talks. With the Los Angeles Kings, it's hard to say how serious things got. I don't think it's fair to say anything is imminent in that front, but there's certainly a lot of interest. Now, one thing that they apparently is a sticking point is the Canucks really want a first-round pick, and the LA Kings seem to be a little bit reluctant to hand that over. Uh, they'd probably prefer to use some of their prospects that they have plenty of, but if the uh, the Canucks would rather have you know, a first-rounder, then that might be an issue but if they can come to terms on a couple of those really intriguing kings prospects i can't see why they might not be able to get a deal done but he's the guy getting the most attention right now from the connect side of things according to the nhl insiders so if they do make a deal to fly in some flexibility it looks like he is likely going to be that guy but things can always change on that front of course when it comes to the maple leafs elliot friedman is now saying that he does not expect the Leafs to make a goalie trade, uh, that they're likely going to go into the playoffs with what they have between Campbell, Morazic, and Schalgren, who's been playing in the number three spot here as of late due to injury to Campbell, had a few good games. Uh, I think it's fair to say the Leafs' defense in front of him has had some good games as well, which has made his job a little bit easier, which is good. Um, but I know a lot of times in front of Morazic and Campbell, that's when the defense wasn't as good, which is a part of the issue. It's not all in the goaltenders. But it does play a role for sure. Now, but it's also likely rumored here that they do move Travis Dermott one way or another to get him a fresh start. That's likely going to happen at the deadline, according to Elliot Friedman. Um, but he said he thinks that they very well might trade Dermott to bring in a different kind of defenseman, maybe one or two depth defensemen, maybe an extra fourth, third or fourth line winger or something like, like that. But it wouldn't be anything too substantial. Just some extra depth pieces is what he's expecting from the Leafs at this point. But as we've said before, until the deadline goes, things can always change at the flip of a button here. So let's just see where that goes. Uh, Hampus Lindholm in Anaheim is being sat out tonight. So he's uh, definitely being traded. Negotiations appear to be at a standstill on that front. Um, so very much looking like Lindholm is time. Anaheim is going to be over now. Like we've seen some of these other trades, the asking prices have been pretty high. So who's going to pay the price on Lindholm is uh, hard to say, but I mean, you know, teams like the like the Hurricanes. I know the the Bruins to a degree. The Leafs have been in there too, but I don't know if they really want to go to what we've seen for asking prices here lately. Uh, and they're not the only teams either. Like there's a, a variety of teams looking for some of these strong D. So Lindholm is likely to get moved as well. Uh, and when it comes to Claude Giroux, uh, now he played his game number one thousand last night. They had the the ceremony before the game, uh, after the game. Normally, you do a lot of that stuff after he's played the game, but I think it's fair to say the team, players, management, everybody knew it was going to be his final night. It was in the home arena in Philadelphia. They made a big deal about it, which is certainly fair, um, but it's fair to say that he is done with the Flyers. He did not travel with the Flyers, who took off after the game heading for Ottawa, where they play tonight. Um, and he's not going to be playing in that game. And if a deal is not done, their next game, they have one more game before the deadline on Sunday, and he will not be playing in that game either. So Claude Giroux as a Philadelphia Flyer is definitely done. It appears to be down to the Panthers and the Avalanche. Most people seem to think that the Panthers are the leading contender, and it's pretty much a done deal, but it's not quite done yet. Uh, likely looking at some combination of Sam Muscovich, uh, maybe Tippett, Denisenko, like those prospects are all being discussed. There could be something off the roster, but nothing substantial going back the other way. It's believed as well the Avalanche have a real solid offer in there, possibly involving a first-round pick in Justin Barron, who's a solid prospect defenseman. Now, it's believed right now that the rumors have it that the, the Avalanche offer is actually better. But the problem is, is that Giroux has a no-move clause, so he can call his own shot here, and he'll only accept the trade to one or the other. Apparently, there was talks that the Bruins and Rangers were involved in the mix as well, and he vetoed those trades. So he's not going to those 
cities, but they were certainly very much interested in having conversations with the Flyers about acquiring the longtime captain. But it's down to these two teams. It seems to be one of the things he seems to be concerned about, according to some reports at least, is that he may have a bigger role in Florida, that the Avalanche are so stacked that he's not sure he's going to be able to get you know, consistent top six, top line playing time, number one power play time. If you look at what they put out there, like where are they going to put him, right? Uh, hard to say exactly where the fit is, whereas the Panthers have a really deep team as well. They do have a ton of left shot forwards, though, so having a right shot like Giroux, either play center or wing, would be big for them and uh, be able to give them some different looks and formations. But um, he seems to think, based on what the reports are, that F- the Florida might, might be a better fit. But at the end of the day, he's going to make that decision to wait because if he will only go to one or the other and won't wait for either one for and let the Flyers decide, then he's going to call his own shot and it won't matter what the offer is. But that's the offers that are apparently being mulled over by both sides right now. It could be done here just about any time. Hard to say. If anything happens before this hits YouTube, then there'll be a follow-up update video to follow. But we'll see where that goes. But Giroux is definitely done in Philly. Will he go back in the summer? It's a possibility, but for right now, that has come to an end. Let me know your thoughts on all the latest trade rumors and news across the NHL discussed here today down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.